Imagine being a student and getting your first job based on a school project that you posted online. Imagine if your boss didn't have to read your resume because he reads your blog. Imagine turning a side project into a profession because you had a large enough following to support you. Or imagine spending most of your time producing a craft, learning a trade, or managing a business while allowing the possibility that your work may attract a group of people who share your interests. These are some scenarios that Austin Cleon, the author of Show Your Work, has us consider. The book itself provides a refreshing and unique way of looking at what the creative process can be like. We'll go over some key points and then we'll summarize each chapter of the book. Leon challenges the idea that we need to be experts in order to start something or teach something. Another important concept is that people are also interested in the process it took to get to the product rather than just being interested in the final product itself. And sharing that process can attract the following and an audience that you can connect with. Sharing our inspirations and our quirks can help others understand us and like us. Teaching our secrets is actually beneficial to others and to us. This book has many charts and illustrations to kind of illustrate these concepts. Culturally, some of us might be taught that talking about ourselves or posting online or talking about our work is problematic or shameful. But Cleon's book reminds us that people also care about the process itself. So they're not just evaluating you, they're also intrigued about how you went from point A to point B. That we're not shamelessly promoting ourselves, but we're learning as we go along. And the first roadblock that a lot of people have is I'm not an expert. I'm not very good at something. And chapter one, Cleon reminds us that we don't have to be geniuses. He tells us that we don't have to be a lone genius working in the basement or in, in a garage to eventually become a billionaire. We don't have to take that route. No offense, Bezos. Cleon defines an amateur as a beginner and argues that what's important is what we contribute, the ideas we share, the connections we make, and the conversations we start. He argues that doing something is better than doing nothing. Moving from average to good might seem like a really big journey, but you can still see what good looks like from your perspective. He argues that the real gap is between nothing and something. And he goes on to talk about the beginner advantage. And what that basically is, is when you're a beginner, you're closer to the process of starting than an expert is. The expert might have been a beginner a very long time ago, so they don't have that same perspective and understanding as many other beginners do. So a beginner is in ways better equipped to teach another beginner. So there's no shame in being only two steps ahead of a beginner. He also encourages us to read obituaries. And this is kind of a deep reminder because the reminder of death will galvanize us to act because time is finite because time is limited and life is meaningful, partly because it's limited and it's finite. In chapter two, he encourages us to think about the process. He encourages us to make the distinction between the artwork, which is the finished product, and artwork, which is the process of making the art. He goes into how the process of sharing your process and your secrets was unthinkable for artists in the pre-digital age. You wouldn't want to tell anybody how you got to your end product that would sell you out, would make you less original. But now the audience wants to be a part of the process of creating. If you put your work online, you make connections sooner. Then he goes into Sturgeon's Law, which basically states that 90% of everything is crap. And then he makes the claim that rather than focusing on that 10% that's not crap, and trying to expand it, Cleon encourages us to make more work and then we'll end up with more good work. It sounds counterintuitive, but he encourages us to focus on quantity rather than quality. And you've probably heard many others talk about the same concept like Ali Abdal. Finally, there's an important chart that you can use to decide what to share and what not to share. So you ask yourself, is it useful or interesting? If yes, then share it. If not, don't. If maybe, then save it for later. And he also encourages us to become a documentarian, to document what we do. And in chapter three, Cleon encourages us to share something small each day rather than focusing on something huge because it adds up. And then there's the concept of stock and flow. For digital media, flow is basically the posts to remind others that we exist, that daily feed. And stock is the content that can hold up for a very long time. It's like a revolutionary idea or thought that has the power to inspire an entire fan base. He encourages us to take the best of our flow and compile it into something great. 
And in chapter four, Cleon argues that sharing our work is not enough. We also have to share the inspiration that we got. We have to share the ideas of those who encouraged us, share quotes. People like to see our line of thought and our thinking. He encourages us to show our quirks and that there are no guilty pleasures because we need originality and not the same polluted content over and over again. Finally, he encourages us to share credit, to give credit to whoever we get an idea or a concept from. It leaves a breadcrumb trail of our inspiration for others to follow. In chapter 5, Cleon argues that every client presentation, every essay, every fundraising request, every cover letter, they're all pitches, sales pitches, stories with endings chopped off. Cleon argues that a good pitch has three acts. Act 1 is the past, Act 2 is the present, Act three is the future. People want to know the backstory, the where and the how of an item, and who made them. He follows up by saying that structure is everything. Author John Gardner argues that the structure of most stories is as follows. A character wants something and pursues it despite opposition and ends with either a win, a lose, or a draw. And in chapter 6, Cleon encourages us to share our secrets. What can you share that can inform or benefit an audience? If it's a craft, what techniques? If you're skilled with certain editing softwares or programs or tools or materials. The minute you learn something, he encourages us to turn and teach it to someone else. And share your reading list because people love reference materials. And you can post tutorials online with pictures and words. Blogger Kathy Sierra says, Make people better at something they want to be better at. Sharing allows you to receive education which connects you to many others and in chapter 7 Cleon says don't turn into human spam shut up and listen sometimes if you want to be a writer you have to read first he defines human spam as people who don't want to listen to other people's ideas and they just want to share their own ideas and thoughts if you want acceptance into a community you have to first be a good citizen of that community and then he uses the expression that we want hearts not eyeballs. In order to become interesting, you have to be interested in something. Spend time getting better at something rather than focusing on connections. And then there's the vampire test. If you feel like after spending time with someone, you feel drained and out of energy, then they're a vampire. If you feel energized after hanging out with somebody, then they're not a vampire like the tradition of Europe, banish vampires. And then he encourages us to identify knuckleballers, basically people who form a brotherhood and they share secrets. They're good peers to share a relationship with. Meet up in meet space, organize meetings in real life with online friends to exchange ideas. Think about it this way, the most famous chefs, Gordon Ramsay, Jamie Oliver, etc., all have recipe books and TV shows. It might sound counterintuitive that they're teaching other people their secrets and their recipes, but that's exactly what made them famous in the first place. In chapter 8 he tells us to learn how to take punches. You get better at something the more that you do it, and the same is true for receiving criticism, especially negative criticism. I remember in my junior year of high school I wrote a college essay and I showed it to a teacher. I just wanted to get the essay over with, but when she read it she told me it was crap and I was shattered. Cleon tells us to let people take their best shot, because when you're putting your work out into the real world you have to be ready to take criticism. Your work is something that you do, it's not who you are. So accept the criticism and move on. It's an opportunity to progress and create new work. And don't feed the trolls. You don't want unnecessary comments from people who aren't concerned about your growth. You want feedback from people who are actually concerned with your development who are actually giving you positive, constructive information. Trolls just have unnecessary and rude and hurtful comments. You'll gain nothing from these, so block them. And in chapter 9, he tells us to sell out, basically to get rid of this mindset and this obsession with this romanticized idea of the starving artist and get rid of the idea that touching money taints or corrupts creativity. Some of the most meaningful and cherished cultural artifacts were made for money, where they were commissioned. And when you get a significant audience around your work and you're confident that your work is valuable and worth something, then you can put a price tag on it. You can charge people a reasonable and fair price for it. And even if you don't have anything to sell, then you can still gain feedback from people through email like MailChimp, from people who follow your work and your ideas, and make more work for yourself. If an opportunity comes that allows you to do more of the work that you like, then say yes. But if an opportunity comes that offers you more money, but less of the kind of work that you want to do, then say no. And there's a quote by Walt Disney in which he says, We don't make movies to make money. We make money to make movies. It's a very 
clever and deep concept. It's about the system to constantly produce work. And in chapter 10, Cleon tells us not to quit our show and not to give up because there are always ups and downs in life. And sometimes you don't know where you are in your current state, but you never know what's coming next. And the people who get what they want are the ones that stick around for the longest. You can't guarantee anything. You have to continuously work and not allow despair to get the better of you. And then he tells us to chain smoke. Basically, a success or a failure in the past is not a guarantee of success or failure in the future. The people who succeed are the ones who are able to persevere despite failures and successes in the past. The day Woody Allen finishes a script or a film is the day that he starts writing one for the next one. It's this idea of momentum. When you finish one project, you use that to motivate you and give you the momentum to continue to another project. Another important concept is to go away so that you can come back. It's the idea of taking a break, whether it's a sabbatical or something else so that you don't burn out because you can't constantly work. We're not robots. And there are three ways to turn off our brains from our connected lives. We can commute somewhere, we can exercise, and we can go outside to get some fresh air and start over and begin again. This is something difficult for a lot of us because we become attached to our work and we don't want to start something new after we've invested so much into one idea or one project. Cleon encourages us to have the courage to move away from old projects and begin new ones to learn something new so that we can move forward. And that concludes the summary. I hope you guys found it useful and insightful. And if you did, be sure to leave a like and share with your friends. And consider subscribing since I post weekly videos on Tuesday at 11am. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.